I'm Andrea Carnes. I know many of you. Um, I'm the senior curator here at the Modern, and I'd. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but thank you. Um, I'd like to say it's a real joy to see you all here this evening for the kickoff celebration of Takashi Murakami, The Octopus Eats Its Own Leg. Just on a couple of housekeeping notes, please silence your cell phones. And also, um, please know that toward the end, we'll save 10 minutes for any questions from any of you guys. So tonight, Michael Darling will be in conversation with Takashi Murakami. Michael and Takashi first worked together in 1998 uh, when they collaborated on an exhibition that opened in 2001 at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles called Superflat. It was a groundbreaking exhibition, and at that time, Michael Darling was associate curator. Currently, Michael Darling is chief curator at the Museum of Contemporary Art in uh, Chicago and also the organizer of this ambitious and revealing exhibition. I would like to say that it's probably the most ambitious exhibition we've ever had here at the Modern. So it is, it's Michael Darling's concept along with Takashi, but we Takashi asked us to give him our wish list of 120%. And so we came up with that list, and then many, many people involved with Takashi made that happen. So we're, we're so happy, and we cannot wait for you all to see the exhibition. Tonight, along with Takashi and Michael Darling on stage, you will see Yuko Bertless. Yuko has worked with Takashi for a long time and works for Kai Kai Kiki, and she will be the translator tonight. So on behalf of the staff and board at The Modern, I want to say thank you for the art, to the artist who we feel so very fortunate to have here with us tonight. And now it is my great pleasure to welcome to the stage Michael Darling and one of the most iconic and influential leaders in the world of contemporary art today, Takashi Murakami. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, it's so great to be here. I got to sneak peek of the show earlier today, and it looks amazing here. The team really did a fantastic job. Uh, all kinds of stuff that wasn't in Chicago and wasn't in Vancouver. So I think you're in for a treat when the show opens later this week. Um, thank you, Takashi, for being here tonight. Um, we um, to, luckily Takashi and I have known each other for a long time, so. These conversations usually are pretty easy, and um, but uh, no, no, not easy. For you. <laughs> so, like, a U.S. question is super difficult. <laughs> we need a two hours, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, the one thing that that's exciting about the show here is, like I mentioned, there's a lot of new things in the exhibition. Um, when we first started talking about the exhibition, I thought one way to bring out some nuances uh, of Takashi's work and maybe even reorient how people were thinking about it and looking at it was to focus on painting. And so what we did, um, we he was able to, or I was able to convince you, I guess, take you all the way back to your earliest paintings um, when you were finishing your studies in Nihonga uh, in Tokyo at the university there. Um, can you talk a little bit about this this period and and even your, your feelings about looking at them today? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so maybe like translation in translation is much better to in understanding for the in detail maybe. The Yuko Sakata, so translation. あの、そうだな。あの、えっと、今回展示してるのでは、ご、6点ぐらい日本画の時代の作品があるんですけど、あの、特にちょっとマイケル さんに言われてどうしてあんまり出したくなかったようなのがこの今出てるようなこういう具体的な亀とか魚を描いた作品なんですけどあのまあ
すごいこうしつこく説得されて、まあ、出してもいいかなと思った理由はあのこの頃のその自分が考えた絵画のこうあり方みたいな、まあ、結構その極端に平面性というか正面性を意識する書き方っていうのがあの2011年の津波の,あの事件があった以降僕の絵柄が随分変わったんですけどその変わった時に動物の描き方とかが結構この辺の時代の描き方に戻っていったので、まあ、いいかなと思って、えー、展示させてもらいました。So in, this,、uh, in the current exhibitions, there are about、uh, six、uh, Nihonga style paintings included. And、um, of those, the pieces that I especially didn't want to show are these、uh, paintings where <laughs> I've written you know, you know, specific objects and animals like、uh, um, turtle and fish. And, but you really persisted that I <laughs> show these works. So, the, but, and then the reason I decided that maybe it's okay to show them was.、Um, Um, I, I had been thinking about、um, painting, the way of painting, and I was really conscious of the flatness of the surface、um, in, in creating my paintings. But after 2011's、um, earthquake and tsunami disaster, the, the way、um, I have been,、uh, the, the images that I've been creating have shifted again, and the way I've been painting the animals have、uh, come kind of full circle and closer to the way I used to paint in,、uh, these paintings. So that's why I thought it might be okay to show in connection to that. And, and even in the case of this picture up, up here of the turtle, there's a, a very similar turtle in one of the Arhat paintings that we have upstairs, too. So I, that was interesting to come around.、Um, we also,、uh, here's another one from, from that time period.、There's, this piece is also really fantastic and magnificent, and it's called Colors、uh, One from 1989. And to me, it almost feels like the bedrock on top of which all of your. Later work would come, and the format is there, the scale, the,、uh, but even the, this monochrome background.、Um, seeing this one again in this context, is that, is that, does it, is it interesting to you still? I know. Almost 30 years later? Do you mean? I know. So that now. まあ、結構その僕の,その何ですかね作品作っていく流れの中ではこう自信が常にないんですよね。で現代美術を勉強し始めた頃は一番最初はあのウォーホールのポップアートから始まってだんだんこう時代を遡っていってであの印象派ぐらいまで。あの遡って勉強してったんですけどその一番難しかったのがやっぱりアメリカの抽象表現主義ででそのまあポロックみたいなああいうこうなんていうんですかねもう本当表現主義そのものっていうことよりも自分のまあずっと日本語で追い求めていた平面性っていうことと、まあ、合致するのがマーク・ロスコだったので。マーク・ロスコの,その,病あの書き方っていうのはどういうものなのかっていうのを、まあ、これはあの博士号を取るためのテストの絵,だ絵でもあったのでその日本画の絵の具を使って実験してみたんですよね。でまあ大体こんなもんかっていうのがこの絵とかで分かったんですけどこの前に散々こういうフラットなあの日本画のピグメントを使った作品が約、えー、150枚ぐらいあるんですけどもでこれがまあ自分の中では決定版の大きさなもので、まあ、今マイケルが言ってくれたみたいに、まあ、すごい巨大な画面に描くっていうのは、まあ、確かにこの作品から始まったのでそういう意味ではあの今の系譜につながっていると思いますけど、まあ、言ってみればその本当にまだ学生時代の。抽象表現主義って何だろうなっていうのを勉強するプロセスの作品ではありました。So um when I'm making work、uh, then and now I really have no confidence and、um, when I first started studying contemporary art、um, I started with pop art you know art artists like Warhol Andy Warhol and then I went backwards. Um, studying all the way back to、uh, Impressionists. And、uh, in that process, the, the、um, art, you know, types of artwork that I found the most difficult were the American abstract expressionism. And、um, 
um, I, I felt um, that there was some kind of affinity, not with uh, pure abstraction like uh, Pollock, but um, with Mark Rothko's work. I felt like there's this flatness of the surface that I can um, relate to, and that's why I started to really uh, study um, him. And then um, this, this particular painting was a painting for as a uh, that I made as a test for exam for the PhD degree. So I used the uh, traditional Japanese uh, Nihonga painting pigment and experimented. So before arriving to this work, um, I made about 150 of these flat. Uh, uh, paintings using Nihonga um, materials, and I, I do think that this is, uh, you know, where I it, everything culminated in. And it's true um, what you say, uh, in that this is this was the first large scale piece that I made that I that led to probably the works that I make now. Um, but this was really when I was a student um, in my attempt to study and understand abstract expressionism. That's how this came about. Right. Well, and, and one thing that, you know, I tried to do in my job as the curator and the storyteller was to sort of connect these dots from the beginning. And so one thing that folks will see in the exhibition is how those, that color field of that big abstraction kind of lends itself to um, works like this or even these blues um, in these Dobe pictures as Mr. Dobe um, starts to evolve and, and emerge uh, in many ways. Um, and wouldn't, wouldn't you say, Takashi, with these kinds of pieces, there's still that Nihonga influence that's, that's holding on in these, in these early images of Dobe? あの、こう、なんか削ってあれですね、あの、風合いを出すっていうのは偶然の効果で、ま、この当時、ま、ちょうど 少しっぽ、4年間ぐらい撮って、あの、1ヶ月10万円分ぐらいの絵の具をもらえる少しっぽレポートとか提出してもらって、だから色がすごい限られていたので、どうやったらその色幅が出るのかなっていうことをやってや
type, you know, different uh, colors of paint. But at the same time, in Nihonga as well, they their their color palettes were li limited to you know red and blue and green. And again, coincidentally, this might have arrived at that mood of Nihonga style. All right. Well, um, in the exhibition, once people get to uh, to this Mr. Dobe, you know, other. This start, this, uh, the exhibition starts opening up and there's some other characters that come into it. But can you talk a little bit about your need to create Mr. Dobe as a, uh, you know, a, a manga or anime influence kind of character? A and then how that might have led to new characters like flowers, mushrooms, uh, and, and other figures? あの、そうですね。最初、ま、要するに自分のこうやんなきゃいけない仕事はどこかっていうと、ま、あの、ちょ、当時、ま、一番最先端だったシミュレーションイズム、アメリカのシミュレーションイズムとの距離感っていうの
India uh, religious paintings. Um, can you talk a little bit about what was going through your head at this moment and why there was such a distinct turn?ガゴシアンギャラリーに招待されて初めて展覧会やるときに作ったんですよね。で、それはやっぱりその当時、あのこの展あの展覧会やる当時はすごく自分的には難しいなと思って、あのやっぱり九一一のそのワールドトレードセン
sort of part of the, the culture and psyche in, um, as the culture developed. So I thought it might make sense for me to bring back this uh, Zen philosophy and theme to this particular show where when the war was sort of um, in, in, the, um, in people's mind. And that's why I decided to tackle the theme of Daruma. Great. Um, well, here are some other images of some things where that I would say are kind of post Daruma, where this very historical kind of look uh, it evolves, including these pictures of these these arhats. Um, one of the things that uh, and, and here are some images too. I want to kind of skip ahead to uh, to hear the talk about some of the sculpture in the show and your relationship to sculpture because um, here in, in Fort Worth there's a lot more sculpture that's been added and from pieces throughout your your career uh, including here upon and and my lonesome cowboy which will be a treat for people to see um, can you talk a little bit about that relationship between sculpture and painting and how one might fuel the, the other or vice versa あの、自分のそのスカルプチャーのえ、ま、こういう風に作ってくださいっていう風にやってたんですけど、そこでいつもこう問題が起きるのが、え、直感の方は直国的に非常に立体のこう、フォームっていうものをすごく大事にしようとして、変な手を、変なって言っちゃ悪い
and this is something that's maybe not touched upon very much in the exhibition, but is, is your, I mean, we just talked about sculpture, but you moving into all kinds of other media and art forms and even things that might not be considered art, but more cultural production. Um, can you talk about how important that is to you? And maybe even if you have new projects that are going off into different realms, like for instance, we have some stills here from Jellyfish Eyes, and I think this is going to be screening here at the museum next week. Um, can you talk a little bit about these other other fields that you've gone into? あの MTV のあの世代のミュージシャンというのはやっぱりその音楽作ってコンサートやってっていうだけではなくて、そのやっぱプロモーションビデオを作ることまでやっぱマインドセットしてやっていた人々だあやってやってこれだと思うんですね。音楽家の域を超えてまあだから当時からあのミュージシャンはアーティストって呼ばれてたと思うんですけど。あの僕はまあそれがあのアーティストと呼ばれるなら現代美術作家っていうのは何なんだろうっていう逆説的な発想があってで自分的にはまあそのその MTV ので出てるミュージシャンのようなアーティスト活動つまりマルチメディアでいろんな表現をすることができて当然であると思っていたのでその意味において映画を作ったりまあコラボレーションしたりいろんなものっていうのはまあ自明のことであったんですけど。あのでもまあ一つこう大きく違うのはやっぱりあの誰かそういう僕の映画を作りたいとかそういう映像をヘルプしてくれるっていう人がそんなにおらず全部やっぱり自前でやってるんでなかなかこう父として進んでいないっていうのがありますけど自分のそのマインドセットの中でまあ結構あ自分がこう作ってる映像に関してはえすごく意図的にあの意図的なものがあってそれはあのサイファイなものをやっぱりしばらく作ろうと思ってるんですよねその意味っていうのはやっぱりこう自分のこう表現の根幹にあるのはやっぱりあの若い頃に得たサイファイのエッセンスっていうのがあってでそれがやっぱり軽んじられている文化の状況ってあると思うんですけどまあ今やっぱりその映画のシーンを見てもあの大きな影響力を持っているのはもう間違いなくサイファイのバカバカしいストーリーであのそのバカバカしいストーリーの中にやっぱり現代の人間たちがあの何かを何て言うんですかね探,そう探し出そうとしていると思うのでそういったエッセンスっていうのも映像でも作るしその映画を作った中からもう一回その絵画の方にフィードバックしたりするしっていうふうな感じでまあ,あのマルチメディアをやっていることによってのペインティングへのフィードバック彫刻へのフィードバックっていうのを行っているつもりです。Um, I believe the, the musicians from the MTV、um, generation, they、um, didn't just make music, but they did concerts and then they would、uh, make、uh, promotional videos. And they were, they were very multi talented. They had to do、um, all these, had to wear different、um, hats to be the musician. And they were musicians of. Often thought of as artists. And sort of,、um, I thought, well, if they are artists,、um, you know, called artists, then what are contemporary, contemporary artists? So I kind of went backwards、uh, in my questioning. And I thought it was、um, a given that an artist has to be able to do multiple things and wear multiple hats, just like MTV、um, era musicians.、Um, that's why. I、um, wanted to really delve into all these different things. I just thought it was,、uh, you just had to be able to do that as a contemporary artist.、Um, the difference is that、um, you know, not many people actively want to help me in <laughs> making films.、Um, so I had to do everything myself, and it really takes a long time to, to make anything myself.、Um, but in creating these moving image、um, works, I have been very consciously.、Um, Working on sci fi genre, and、um, because at the, at the root of my sort of creative motivation is my, the influence of sci fi in my youth. And、uh, it's like a sci fi's essence is in me、um, at the base of everything、um, I've been making. And I feel like the genre itself is sort of、um, not taken very seriously culturally. Although、um, when you look at、uh, film, films,、um, you know, there's always this like sci fi. Uh, essence、uh, in, the, in the films that you watch, and they're very important. And so I've been working on、uh, you know, exploring what those essence are and then putting them into my film, and then sort of coming back、uh, full circle, feeding them back into my painting and sculptures. So that's why the, these other activities are important to me. Great.、Um, Well, I sort of took, took everybody through slides leading up to these Vans shoes. I did want to.、Um, 
uh, ask you a little bit about Instagram. Um, or, I mean, in a way, kind of the, the prior question about these different media that you work in, whether it's fashion or animation or films, um, I think that's, to me, as an outside observer, has broadened your audience and especially moved you beyond the fine art audience. It seems to me that your work on Instagram, and for instance, you know, when we were working towards the show in Chicago, I was getting updates on what was going to be in our show by following you on Instagram to know how these paintings were developing and sculptures. Um, to me, it feels like you've developed a really interesting persona on Instagram that's very honest and very open and that to me feels very different than most artists that are as successful as you and, and, and in a position like yours. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what it means to you to work on Instagram like that? Twitter got out at the time, at the time, I was 20 years old, I was 45 years old, I was 20 years old, I was 20 years old, I was 20 years old, ツイッターって何なのっていうのを随分あのまあ聞き込んでツイッターいろいろ始めて若い人たちと随分あの日本で日本語で喧嘩してたんですよね3年間ぐらいずっと喧嘩しててもう僕はもうどんだけやっぱ日本人に嫌われるかっていうかまあ僕のメンタリティーかですよあの分かってでまあ,あのフェイスブックにやインスタグラムっていうのはまあその流れで必然的にやったんですけど。あのインスタグラムが自分にとってすごくこう、まあ、フィットしたんですよねなぜかというと僕あのコンプレックスがいくつかあってその表現におけるその一つはあの色に対してすごい大きなコンプレックスがあってそれはあの大学の時にあ,のある女の子に「ものすごい村上君って色彩感覚悪いよね」って言われてそこでまあ,あのいろいろバウハウスの本とかを読んで、えー、勉強したんですけど。もう一つ大きなそのコンプレックスはやっぱり写真がどうしても下手だったんですよねしかしインスタグラムはあの構造をこうフレーミングこう結構いじってできたりとかあの誰でも結構上手なあのエフェクトが作れてなんか自分がその下手だった部分をまあ結構カバーしてくれるあの機能があったのでで、まあ、ハマっていったんですよね。でまあ、そうこうしてるうちにあのインスタグラムをその中心にして表現してるクリエーターたちの,あの表現方法もいろいろ知ってでそういう人たちをフォローするようになったら、まあ、なんとなくあの他の現代美術作家よりもちょっとまあフォロワーが多いぐらいになったんですけど、まあ、でも逆に言うとそんなにあの僕、まあ、例えばカウズとか。JR さんみたいにあの100万を超えるようなフォロワーがいるわけでもないしあのそんなインスタグラムが上手っていうわけでもないと思うんですけど、まあ、ただやっぱりあの1日大体2時間ぐらい僕インスタグラム見てるんであの、まあ、そういう意味ではヘブーユーザーなんであのインスタグラムからピックアップしたアイディアとか自分の作品をまあこう投稿して反応を見るとかそういうものはまあすごく有,有効的にというかまああのアクティビティを持って使っているっていうのは確かですね。So um, when Twitter came around, I was maybe about mid 40s, 45 or so, and I had、um, I grabbed you know some art, younger artists in their 20s and asked, them, "What is Twitter? How does it work?" And、um, then I started using it. And in Japan, in Japanese, I was for a long time I was just Fighting with many, many younger people on Twitter.、Um, and I've really learned through that, that you know, how despised my, not myself, but my mentality is in Japan.、Um, but anyway, so that's what I was doing. And then, as sort of a natural progression, I went on to use Facebook. And、um, especially, Instagram felt like a great fit for me because I had、um, uh, some inferiority complexes.、Um, In terms of artistic expression, one of them is the color because when I was in the university,、um, a, a female fellow student said, Oh, you really have such a bad sense of color. And so I, I felt so bad about it, and I studied you know,、uh, books by Bauhaus artists to really. Understand the theory of color. The other thing was that I was so bad at photography. But in Instagram, you can、um, fiddle with composition and change colors and effects. And you know, even if you're bad, you can post 
great pictures. So I, I really, I really got into that, and then that's why I was uh, using Instagram a lot. And then I started following um, creators who really use Instagram and express through Instagram, and I was following those people and sort of learning from them. So I maybe have a little bit more than usual contemporary artists, um, you know, uh, more more followers than those. But you know, nothing close to artists like Cause or JR, who has you know more than a million followers. Um, but I do, I do spend m maybe more than two hours a day on Instagram. So I do pick up a lot of information through Instagram and I do post different things um, on Instagram to test out the reactions. That's great. Um, follow him on Instagram if you don't already. It's, it's always fun. <laughs> um, lastly, um, the other thing that really seems to be giving you a lot of energy and excitement right now is your involvement with what maybe could be called streetwear culture, um, sneakerheads, and um, and this it, and you always have such a good nose for kind of where culture is going and youth culture in particular, and you know here you are, 55 year old man, but you're very cool with young kids and young people, and you've been able to do this I think because you keep reinventing yourself, keep turning towards the new rather than being scared by it. Um, this is an image here from a, a, a convention called Complex Con that was in Long Beach, California in 2016 and then the second one in 2017. I was lucky enough to be there both times when you were the artistic or visual artistic director of, of it. But um, can you talk a little bit about this this culture and where this is Leading us and leading you. あのコンプレックスメディアはあのなんですか、Facebook であの発見してで毎日今日のカニエさんっていうなんかそういうコーナーがあって一日三四回なんかなんかすごいくだらないカニエの近況を報告するコーナーがあったんですよね。コンプレックスがレポートしてて。でなんかもうこれ日本でもそういうゴシップ新聞みたいなのがあるんでそういうのに似ててすごいなと思ってでまあカニエさんは僕コラボレーションさせてもらったんですけど非常にミステリアスな人間であのたまに連絡突然来て東京に来てうちのスタジオで突然こう「俺の新曲聴いてくれ」っつったりあのなんかこう何て言うんですかねいろいろコラボレーションしたいって言っても突然音沙汰なくなったりとかミステリーだったんですけどそういうものの。カニエ・ウエストって何なんだろうなと思ってたところにそのコンプレックスがずっと今日のカニエって、まあ、キム・カーダシアンがこんな変なことしたとかいろんなことやってたのでで興味を持ったんですよねそしたらあの彼らの方からちょっとあの話があるんで会いましょうあインタビューがあるからあのニューヨーク来た時にちょっと寄ってくれって言われてで寄ったところそのコンプレックスメディアの。えー、ファウンダーのマーク・エコーさんと会ってでそのマーク・エコーさんが今度そういったイベントやるんで何か手伝ってくれないって言われたあいいですよ、まあ、僕ずっとコンプレックス大好きだから」って言うんでそれで入っていったんですよねだからそれすごく偶然で。であの初年度あのコンプレックスコン行ってみたらあの歩いてたら僕コンプレックスはそういう意味でカニウエストの近況を知るメディアだったのに現場に行ったらみんな僕の名前を知ってて。あのもう結構多くの人が僕の目の前に来てブルブル震えて「お前がお前がなんかこうあの言わざひばヒーロー」とかなんか言っててめっちゃなんか勘違いしてるんじゃないかなこいつらと思ってあのやってたんですけど、まあ、それがあのどうもなんか嘘ではなくて本当にそういうその僕のファンがそこにいるっていうことを、まあ、初年度に発見してでなん,なんだろうなという気持ちで去年はまあそのじゃあそういうファンがいるんだったら。自分の方からアクティビティを持ってやってみようと思ったら、まあ、バージルさんがいてバージルさんと一緒に、まあ、コラボそのうちするようになったんですけど、まあ、結構偶然あのコンプレックスに出会いそのコンプレックスが抱えているスニーカーヘッズの人たちに出会いでそういった偶然の流れの中でいろいろ影響を受けてって今に至るとあんまりこう戦略的じゃない人生の生き方の果てにここまで漂着したという感じなんですけどね。So um, I, I found Complex Media on Facebook um, one day because they were they had a corner uh, at one point uh, that's just covered 
today's Kanye, basically. Um, they would post something about, um, you know, something silly about Kanye or Kim Kardashian three or four times a day. And in Japan, there are gossip papers like that. Um, so I was kind of familiar with the format. And even though I had collaborated with him, he was he remained a mystery to me. Um, he would just, you know, out of the blue sometimes say, oh, I'm in Tokyo and I'll come to your studio, listen to my music. And then he would say, oh, let's do another collaboration. But then most of the time it would just disappear. Um, it, wouldn't, it would go nowhere. So I was always wondering, what is Kanye? <laughs> And then it turns out that Complex and Media had this corner, conveniently, uh, talking about, you know, Kim did this today, Kanye did this today, so I was very interested and I was following it every day. And then um, one day, Complex Media asked me to come into the office because there was a, an interview that I wanted to do, do, and then at the office I met the founder of Complex Media, Mark Echo, and then he told me about this event that he's working on. Um, for the first time that year and asked me to get involved. So I said, oh, I like complex media, so you know, sure, I will be involved. So um, the first year I went to the event and then um, I, I had thought of complex media as something uh, where people go to find out about Kanye's gossip. But it turns out that um, there are many people who actually knew me and, and recognized me and they will come sort of shaking and say, oh, I like your work, I'm your, uh, you're my hero. And I thought, well, maybe they don't really know what they're talking about. But um, it turns out that maybe they weren't really lying and they, they were my real fans. And that was a huge discovery for me. So then the second year, last year, um, I, I thought, well, if there are fans there, I should you know, do something for the fans. So um, you know, I was doing more things geared toward those, uh, the type of people. And then um, there I reconnected with Virgil, um, which led to more uh, projects. So, um, in any case, um, yeah, so then, so co by coincidence, I found Complex and ComplexCon and then um, discovered the existence of sneakerheads. And so that, that encounter has been influencing me since, but it's not, there's, there's no strategy involved in this. It's just like the, my life, no strategy. I just go along with the flow. Um, but 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 um, would you say that there is an energy there that you feel is new and different and maybe even better than the energy that you find or feel in, in the art world? Yeah, like, because, you know, uh, like, honestly, when I'm making um, money, like, uh, offer from the gallery, like, kind of making for the flower painting, or, like, kind of Mr. Dove something. So this is, you know, I can, I can do that. But, uh, you know, again, 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 you know, every day making for the flower painting and the Mr. Dove painting, looks like a lot painting. This is, you know, super boring. Like, uh, kind of the, my brain is melting. That's why I need a fresh air anytime. So that's why I'm making for the movie stuff. And, uh, you know, like uh, recently, the, you know, uh, come into the, my brain, the fresh air is, uh, you know, cooperation with Baju because his style is completely new stuff. Like, uh, you know, each kind of the minutes uh, he gave us the WhatsApp information, and uh, I, we respond to, you know, for him, like, uh, like a six second, you know, he, you know, take back to the reaction. So something like that, you know, experience, I have no, I have no experience. That's why really, you know, fresh air can breathe in. So the collaboration thing and also the different media thing is, uh, I have, to, I keep my, in my brain. So that's why I can make it for the, you know, many paintings or sculptures, like uh, my, you know, kind of the, you know, true job. So, but, uh, you know, if I will stop, like, uh, for example, the gallery business, this is not business because, you know, I lose the money, you know, a lot of money lose. So, but at the same time, like, uh, you know, I keep in attention because, you know, I really lovely for, you know, talking with a young artist, uh, like uh, mostly the, you know, can speak with, uh, you know, serious, you know, people for the making art. So that is, uh, you know, I, anytime to remind about uh, you know, when I was young, so I was so freshy, I was so, you know, kind of the having a big ambitious thing and uh, everything is I believed but now is I I cannot believe anything, so something like that you know uh, other stuff other job is I really need in my head. That's why you know. 
And, and just to clarify for everyone, that gallery is, that Takashi is talking about is this Kai Kai Kiki Gallery in Tokyo that he runs and operates and owns, and you invite all kinds of artists to come in there and do shows throughout you know the year. Young artists, but also well-known artists, maybe from the West that haven't been shown so much in in Japan too. Isn't that right? Yeah. So because you know when I was student, like several galleries, uh, because that was that moment was. Uh, you know, bubble economy effect in Japan, like uh, a lot of money is in a society. That's why many galleries can invite from the West. That's why I can see the, you know, the Western artists. But right now is gallery, you know, business is in Japan is not good. So very few gallery can, you know, invite from the West or without in Japan. So, some somebody to do that, so I I need a you know fresh air, so and same time to I can keep the you know making a, something like that project in my budget. That's why you know uh, I you know uh, import from the you know uh, out of Japan like uh, you know mostly the Western artist. Well, we have left about 10 minutes to take some questions from the audience, if anyone has questions for Takashi. And um, we'll figure out how the best to, way to, to uh, uh, maybe you right there with the black t-shirt, you've had your hand up first. Uh, curious if you feel more comfortable or maybe even successful with like urban culture events like ComplexCon versus working in the gallery scene or even say something that's kind of overdone like Art Basel now, that's more depicted towards fine art? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because, you know, uh, like kind of the, you know, like, okay. Uh, yeah, explain in Japanese. Uh, I know. え、バージルがよく言ってるのがエデュケーションっていう言葉を言っててで、なぜかっていうと彼はあの、僕とルイヴィトンがやったコラボであのコラボをあの、シカゴのシカゴは現代美術のギャラリーがあんまりなくてあ
they were really excited about it, and they, that really opened their eyes about, you know, into what um, what a contemporary art might be. And that's when he started really looking into and studying um, contemporary art. And um, even though fashion and um, art might look like they're um, occupying very similar part of a culture, there exists, you know, um, pretty deep uh, divide in between and bridging those different zones might be very difficult but it's also very fun and you know if there is a bridge then every, everyone would cross you know they, they want to cross so I think it's important that there are many different zones and to bridge them over and um, it's not that one is better than the other and I think it's great you know if you stayed in one zone you would get bored you know you don't do anything new so you want to go to another zone and then for the bridge to be there is very important so I think it's fine for different places to express exist you know whether it's complex or Art Basel it's really you know just great that they're all there um, I don't think one or the one is better than the other um, and then after the success of complex con I, I think there are many other uh, follower events that are coming up like like Hypebeast Con maybe is um, coming up this year, and there may be similar types of events coming up. And I'm kind of, um, um, I, I when, when something like that happens, I tend to want to withdraw from it. So um, I, even though I think it's a good thing that all these things are popping up, I might kind of withdraw a little bit and distance myself. Okay, uh, yes? I would wonder if you touch back on Daruma. Uh, you know, it, it strikes me that Daruma is, uh, who, who, you know, who exists in Japan from the 14th century and, and, and is expressed century after century in uh, sumo-e paintings and uh, is a hero of Buddhism and even the painting of Daruma and the of, and the appreciation of Daruma paintings is a form of, of Zen meditation. And, and, and yet, you know, in modern day times, Daruma becomes a little kitschy doll. And, and he becomes the, the perfect example of flattening that super flat seems to represent. The idea that all of these cultures are, uh, are um, in some way equivalent. And I wondered what he thought, if he thinks that some value has been lost in, in such a transformation of a cultural image. <clears throat> まあ、ち,ちょうどすごいいいポイントビューを言,言,言われたと思うんですけどあの特に戦後の日本ではあの可愛い文化っていうのがあの結構バーンとこうあの拡散していったと思うんです生まれて拡散していったと思うんですけど、まあ、あのハローキティとか、まあ、僕の作品もその文脈を踏んでるんですけどもあのちょうどネットフリックスの新しいエピソードでなんか。おも,おもちゃの歴史みたいのがあって、まあ、あのおもちゃはどういうふうにできてどういうふうに人に広がっていってその会社がどうやって倒産しそうになったりあのなんか身売りをしたりとかっていう番組なんですけどそこであのトランスフォーマーとあのハローキティが取り上げられていてそれは日本の会社が結構あの主役になってるんですけどそこでやっぱり常に語られるのはやっぱり日本が敗戦して。あのその中で、まあ、人々の癒しみたいな文脈の中で可愛いキャラクターっていうのが生まれてきたっていうのが、まあ、その番組ではそういうものにフォーカスはしてないんだけれどもあの紹介するビデオとかそういうものを見るとそういうふうに語られてるんですよね。今あのだるまがやっぱりそのキッチンになっててその、まあ、ある意味可愛いキャラクターみたいになってたりするのとかが、まあ、その禅のすごくシリアスな思想から随分かけ離れているような流れになっていることに対する、まあ、あのそういう意見を聞くみたいな感じだったかと思うんですけどあのそのキッチンになってあのキャラクターになっていくっていうのはある意味人の癒しにおけるすごく最高に高いゾーンなんじゃないかと僕は思ってます。あのやっぱりそのキャラクターを見てにっこりやっぱ気持ちがにっほっこりするっていうのが
一番あの実は難易度の高いあの気持ちの表現を,表現をこう導く行為であって、まあ、お笑いとかもそうだと思うんですけども泣いたりなんだりするっていうことよりもやっぱ笑,笑うとかにっこりするっていうのがすごく大事なことだと思うんでだから馬がそういうゾーンまでその禅の厳しい修行を経て心の自由を得なければいけないっていう流れのを、まあ、壁を見つめることであの開発した男のストーリーが。可愛いキャラクターになっていくっていうのはある意味あの自明のことというかそこまで力強いあの、まあ、時代をどんどん乗り越えていって今にまで生きているキャラクターになっているってことは、まあまあ、本当にある意味本当に何て言うんですかね癒やしの王道をちゃんと突っ走ったあの思想であり、えー、その思想だったのかなと思いました。今の話を聞いてはい。Episode, I think、um, it, the, the series explains how、uh, after Japan lost the war,、uh, the characters, cute characters, came by as sort of a context of healing. And Um, you know, it's not that they were trying to present them as such, but the videos that they use, video clips they use to explain、um, how the、uh, k a w a i i、um, you know, cute things came up、uh, sort of tells that kind of narrative that they came about as a, as a healing. And I think、um, you mentioned about the Daruma, this, the, the historical, historic Zen character Daruma became a kitsch character, and it might have distanced itself from the, the real meaning of Zen and the high culture that it came before. I think、um, something to become,、uh, that, that Daruma has become kitsch and became a character of healing is sort of like the highest achievement in a sense for Zen, because、um, you, know, you, you look at a cute character and then smile, right? And it's a very difficult thing. To bring about in people. You know, you can make people cry maybe, but it's more, it's very important and a difficult thing to make people smile.、Um, you know, and comedy is sort of in the same, uh, uh, same realm, and it's, it's like the most difficult achievement, and it's a zone、um, that is hard to attain. So, for,、uh, in order to do that to people, the Zen,、uh, if you have to practice Zen and really、um, liberate your heart first. Uh, and mind first, and、um, to attain that、uh, state of mind. And Daruma is someone who came, about with the,、uh, came out with a, a meditation method of just staring at the wall for years and years to achieve that、um, realm. So, for that person to become this k i t c h character and to make people smile, I feel like it's just really. Um, you know, he's made it to this highest place. So I, that's what I thought when you talked about it. Well, unfortunately, we've come to our, the end of our session here, and we could go on all night long. I'm sure there's a, lots of questions out there for Takashi, but、um, we really, really encourage you to come and see the exhibition as it opens、um, little by little the, later this week. And, and again, I'm just absolutely so thrilled、uh, and honored that it's here at this museum, and this museum has taken such great care, and it looks so beautiful. So I want to thank the Modern and the team here、um, for such a wonderful presentation. And thank you, Takashi, for your. Your generosity in speaking with us tonight. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you to Yuko for her amazing translation, too. <laughs>